Hey guys, it's Kyle. Welcome back to a brand new Minecraft video on my channel, guys. Today, I have a mod showcase for you guys, showing off one of the greatest mods in Minecraft history, guys. Like, literally, <clears throat> probably the best mod I've ever played. My favorite mod at this point, but it's gonna be my favorite mod in five years. And it's probably just gonna be my favorite mod forever, okay? It's just, it's just, it's just an insanely good mod. Now guys, one super special thing, as you can probably already tell what mod it is by looking in my left corner and seeing that I have a Charmander right there. This is Pixelmon. And one thing, a disclaimer before I start this video, guys, I cannot give you the download link. I can't. I'm not... I, I cannot fight a lawsuit against Nintendo. That just That's just not gonna happen, okay? I'm sorry. There are people out there that you can get it from. I know that I've said this before in my Pixelmon series. There are people that you can get this from. You know, a little shady business on the side, in the dark, black market kind of people, ladies and gentlemen. People who believe and get their stimulation from going above and beyond the law. And just doing stuff they're not supposed to do. People, people who are like that are cool. Sure. Be that person if you want to be that person. I'm not judging. None of that. I, I just can't give it to you guys. Lol. Anyway, guys. This is a mod showcase. We haven't done one of these in a very, very long time, guys. And, you know, this mod just deserves one. It just deserves the spotlight. Deserves 100% of the spotlight tilted in its direction, okay? This deserves a mod showcase, guys. So, I'm going to be showing off the basics. Um, we're not going to get super in-depth because this is, is a huge, huge mod, okay? You can go so in-depth with this, and I'm just not going to do that today. If you guys want to see a part where I go in-depth to EVs, IVs... All of the uh, the move sets, the, all the NPCs, all the structures, everything like that. Le let me know in the comments. Leave a comment down below if you want to see a super in-depth mod showcase of this. But for right now, we're just gonna go over the basics. What you're gonna need to do when you spawn into a world. What you gotta look for. How you gotta set everything up. What you're gonna want. Hello, hi, Mega Charizard. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> just just cheekily hopping into my uh, hopping into my intro. What's up, dude? Sa, sa, dude, homie. What's up? What's up? You just keep doing you. <coughs> Jeez. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you are excited for this mod showcase, let me know by leaving a like down below and subscribing if you're a brand new to the channel. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into this now. You're looking at my screen and you're seeing something that, oops, not that, not that. That might be a little overwhelming to you. I, and I hopefully this doesn't overwhelm you because this is the basics and... <laughs> <laughs> Granted, this all won't be together in the exact same spot. This is this is going to be what you need to start your basic world out now. One thing we before we get started, okay? Let's just go over something. Hello, Mega Venusaur. Is that that's a Mega Shiny Venusaur? Hi. You're actually a great lead into the topic I want to talk about now. Inside of Pokemon, okay? There's like a four thousand one in four thousand chance. That your Pokemon is shiny. Obviously, it's a little bit different with the Megas. The Megas are always shiny, okay? That might not even be shiny. That might just be Mega. I doubt, I don't actually, I, don't, I know that's not shiny. I think that's Mega. Anyway, there's like a 1 in 4,000 chance of getting a shiny Pokemon, okay? I spawned into my world, and you obviously you get to pick your starter because I only have Gen 1 loaded in. I picked Charmander. It's a freaking shiny Charmander. Like, what? I <laughs> I, I, I haven't even found a shiny in my entire Pixelmon series, and we're on, like, episode 6, okay? I spawned into the world with a freaking shiny Charmander. Like, what is up, homie? What is up? My gosh, alright, that was just a little side note. Okay, so, when you spawn into your Pokemon world, there's going to be a screen, and it is going to ask you to pick a starter Pokemon, okay? I picked Charmander. Now... He is going to appear in the GUI in the top left of your screen. Now, what you are going to do is you're going to want to make sure your key binds are all nice and set up. And mine is bound to R, which it should be to release the Pokemon, okay? That'll throw out Charmander, and that is also used to bring back Charmander. Now, as you get a little further into your, uh, your game, I can't do it right now, but if you use your arrow keys, you will be able to scroll down the GUI over here and select your other Pokemon that you have caught and captured in your Pokemon world. Now, coming along with that, what you're going to want to do, if you want to see the moveset, the nature, the anything, you're going to want to hover over your Pokemon inside of your inventory. There's going to be a little GUI right here that houses your, in your, uh, your inventory, geez. 
and your Pokemon, as well as any special buffing items that you want to use, which we can get into in a different video, guys. So basically what you do is you right click and it will bring up a different GUI right here. You can check out the stats, the moves, or the summary. Basically, I hit summary, it'll show me everything, it'll show me his XP bar, it'll show me his HP, his status. Now, down here, you can click on moves, okay? And right now, you, your basic moves for your Charmander are Growl, which the user growls in an endearing way, making opposing Pokemon less worry, and this lowers their attack stat. Just a basic move done by Charmander. The next one you get is Scratch. It's a hard pointed sharp claws, rake the target and inflict damage. It does 40 damage and it does it every time. It has 100% accuracy. Now, if you click stats, okay, you'll see all the stats of your Pokemon, okay? You'll see it's HP, it's attack, defense, special attack, defense, speed, it's happiness, and it's nature, okay? Nature is the biggest one if you want to go for a high IV and EV Pokemon. You're going to want to look up all the natures for the, the best natures for the Pokemon you're getting. So that's basically the sim- Okay, okay. Rhyme, time, set, day. Now, now that you have figured out how to check your IV, EVs, all your stats, all your moves on your Pokemon, you can finally dive into the amazing world of Pixelmon. Now, once you spawn in, obviously your world is not going to look like this because mine is in super flat, but... The first things that you are going to want to look for are these apricorns. And now this yellow one does not feel like growing, so my apologies. I was hoping, actually, hold on, we need to get a crafting table. Oops. We need, oops, not draft. We need a crafting table. Perfect, there we go. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find these apricorns in your world. They will spawn throughout your world in all the different biomes everywhere. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to collect a multitude of these apricorns because... Without these Apricorns, the game is not possible. It's literally not possible to complete. So, what you're going to do is you're going to want to approach a fully grown Apricorn, and it's going to look like this. Okay, it's going to be a, a tall tree, a block and a half, two blocks tall. Holy dang, that is a big Venusaur. Hold on. Let me show you guys this Venusaur. Look at that boy. Look at that boy over there. Oh my word, we're getting all the Pokemon spawns. Dang. Dang, anyway. So you're going to want to... Okay, we're lagging a little bit. Now we got we to gotta put that back. Down to, there we go. What you guys are going to do is you're going to want to approach a fully grown apricorn tree and it's going to look like this. It's going to be a block and a half, two blocks tall with an orb on the top, okay? If it has this on the top, it is not ready to be picked. It is simply flowering and in the final stages before it can be picked. So once they're fully ready to be picked, you're going to want to right click on them and it will collect the apricorns for you. Now, what I would suggest doing is taking those apricorns and replanting them. This will basically just allow for you to accumulate a multitude of these, oh, that doesn't need to go there, a multitude of these apricorns, and then for future use, you will have plenty of them. Now, everything is literally spawning in the world. <laughs> We're literally getting all the spawns. I love it. I love it. Now, once you're, see, look, this is a baby apricorn right here. This is a seedling. This is a baby apricorn, okay? It's going to grow into a full big grown poppy daddy and ultimately give us its glorious bounty that, us that, that we can take advantage of. Now, once... You have accumulated some apricorns. I, uh, I, I'm going to do a little demonstration with an Ultra Ball, okay? What you're going to use these apricorns for is, as you can see inside of this chest, you have the black and the yellow apricorns. Now, you take these apricorns, and you can't do anything with them. Wait, can you? Yeah, no. The only thing you can, the only thing you can do with them is you can smelt them inside a furnace, and you will end up with cooked apricorns. Now, these are huge. These are important. These are the only things that you need, okay? If you want to be successful. Now, basically, you use these to make Pokeball discs, okay? So, I have that demonstrated right here. I'll actually do it in a crafting table to show you guys that this works, okay? So, you take a cooked black one, a cooked yellow one, and a cooked black one. Just like this. Now, they all have different recipes, okay? I'm just simply using an Ultra Ball as a uh, showcase. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself, after you have some discs, you're going to want to go out into the world and you're going to want to collect yourself some iron. Now, with this iron, to complete your Pokeballs... You're going to want to tuck three of it in there, and you will end up with five iron discs. Now, if you try to go into your crafting table and use these, it's not going to work, okay? Th nothing is going to happen with these discs. Nothing. You cannot do anything with these discs in terms of crafting a Pokeball. One other thing we need is a button. Can, can I have button, please? Okay, fine. We're going to create and get a button. I need buttons. Give me all the buttons. This is, this is essential. If you don't know how to make a button, you need to put... 
cobblestone in a crafting table, and then the, or cobblestone in a furnace. Take out the fully cooked stone, put it in your inventory, you will get yourself a button. Now, with these discs, this is this is the huge and the important part. You're going to want to craft yourself a hammer. It does not have to be a diamond hammer. It can be an iron hammer, a wood arrow, uh, all the multitude of hammers, okay? But the diamond hammer is going to get your, it's going to get the job done the fastest, okay? Crafting recipe is the same, but with different materials, and you will, hello, hello, who's there? Hi, hi, Firo. Hey, buddy, wow. Hey, our yellow one grew, sweet. All right, we'll take the yellow one planted there just for fun. Okay, now we can say that we have fully planted. Uh, you trying to fight me, homie? You trying to fight? My shiny Charmander will wreck you, okay? We'll show off the fighting GUI in a second, okay? We're still working on we're still working on the basics, Vero. Chill, chill, boys, chill. Okay. Now, once you have your discs, your buttons, and your hammer, you are going to want to craft yourself an anvil. Now, this is again where iron comes into play, and I will show you the crafting recipe like this. Okay. It is seven pieces of iron in a crafting table, just like this, and you will get yourself a Pixelmon anvil. You do not want to make a Minecraft anvil because it does not accomplish the same task. Okay. Does not. Now. Once you have yourself an anvil, you're going to want to chuck your disc down, right click your disc on the anvil, and it will place the disc, that's probably a little loud in your guys' ears, it will place the disc down on the anvil, okay? Now, this GUI looks, this actually looks really sweet, okay? Then what you're going to want to do is you want to take your trusty hammer, your Mjolnir, and you're going to right click, and that will take it back, okay? If you ever mistake, you can always get it back. Now, take your hammer, and left click. Oh my gosh, I just destroyed something important. And as you left click, it's going to eventually flatten your disc into a base. Now, this gets a little tedious if you don't have a diamond hammer, okay? Because a diamond hammer just cruises, okay? It just cruises through this. So, if you don't have the, the luxury, if you will, of getting yourself a diamond hammer, you can always create yourself a glorious mechanical anvil. It saves you a lot of time and a lot of effort, okay? Crafting recipe for this is pretty simple. It's a furnace. A sticky piston and iron bars. Again, more iron. Six iron gets you 16 of these bad boys, and you are good to go. Now, if you don't know how to make a sticky piston, I'll show you that as well. It's a slime ball and a piston. A piston is simply three wood, four cobble, a piece of iron, and a redstone. That will get you a mechanical furnace. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, hey, come back. Kyle, what do you do with a mechanical furnace? And hey, I'm here to show you, but let me first fix my mistake. Let me fix my mistake real quick. Okay, it was this thing, right? Yeah, it was. Yes, it was definitely this thing. There we go. Bang. Bang. Now, what you're going to do with this mechanical furnace is you're obviously going to need some coal. I'll separate this. Get the job done faster. And you can put in your discs. Now, this is a really sweet animation. And this makes the base for you without any work. Okay? And it has a dope animation. Like, like look at that. Look at how well done this mod is. Like, they did and thought of everything. Okay, so now that your discs are being completed, you're done, you're done good, you take your discs and your ultra ball lids, simply for an example, it can be any kind of lid, you take your lids and you put them in your crafting bench. Now, I believe you can put them anywhere you want, you just have to have lids, bases, and buttons, and that will reward you with some pokeballs. Now, we have some pokeballs, we could, gen we could go out into the world and we could attempt to capture a pokemon, okay? But the capture rate for these Pokeballs is different, okay? Ultra Balls is about a 2% capture rate. No, not a 2%. A 2% increased capture rate. Why are these still burning? Oh, there, there was a coal. It needed to do 8. Anyway, you take these out and you can just chuck them. You right click. Oh, because I'm in creative. I can't bring them. You right click. You're going to throw a Pokeball. Looks pretty sweet. The animation looks dope. And that is how you're going to go around your world and complete your Pokedex. Now... There's a couple Pokemon that you cannot get by capturing them with a Pokeball. They will not spawn wild in your world. And those are the fossil type Pokemon. Now, this, it's not that hard to get them, I promise. All you're going to want to do is find yourself an ocean. And because this is a super flat world, I can't find you an ocean. I just can't do that. So, I have these fossils right here with me in my inventory. Now, when you get into an ocean, what you're going to want to look for is... On the bottom of the gravel, right? Because ocean floors are gravel. In that gravel, you're looking for a big black smudge, okay? That symbol... Sim symbols? I was going to say simplifies. That symbols that that block is a fossil block. And the best way to go down there is to take a door. Place the door next to the block of a fossil. That will create an air pocket in which you can get in and dig really fast with your pickaxe. Dig up that fossil and you will be rewarded, if you're in Gen 1, one of these three fossils. Now... 
probably thinking like, bruh, what, what do we do with these, right? Like, you can, you can buy smack stuff with it, but it's, it's not going to get you the fossil Pokemon that you want. Well, that's where, that's where these two things in particular come in handy. Now, what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a fossil cleaner and a fossil machine. Now, these are pretty simple to make. You are going to have to go out and get some more materials because, yes, it still works the same way as Minecraft. You do have to build stuff. So the fossil cleaner is simply two redstone, a glass pane, and some aluminum plates. Now, this aluminum plate stuff kind of gets gets a little confusing because you need bauxite to get it, right? So if we look up here and we look up B-A-U bauxite, okay? It looks a lot like iron, okay? I'm going to show you how similar to iron this looks. Look, bang. Like, it looks a little different. It's got a little lighter tone and there's more particles. But basically with this, you put this in a furnace, you get yourself an aluminum ingot, Take that aluminum ingot. Yes, you can make aluminum tools with it. I would, however, not recommend doing that. You can also make aluminum armor. I would recommend taking your... Actually, we should get an aluminum ingot. Nope, that is not what I needed. Take an aluminum ingot. Now, this is where this is where it gets a little cheeky. This is where um, you really need an anvil. Let me make a day again. Actually, let's do... Game rule. Do... Daylight cycle false. There we go. Now it'll just stay day. This is where your anvil comes in handy, ladies and gentlemen. What you're going to want to do is you, uh, you're going to want to stick that on the other end, right? So we put our Pokeball down on this end right there. You're going to want to put your aluminum ingot down on this end. Take your hammer again, pound it. This is probably going to take a little longer because it's bigger. And you're going to get yourself an aluminum plate, which can be used to make healers, green tanks, um, your fossil machines. That is huge. So you're going to need to go out into your world and find yourself a lot of aluminum. Now, back to our crafting recipe. Charmander, I did not mean to summon you. Bruh. All right. So let's hop back into our inventory and this. All right. So this is going to be your fossil cleaner. That is one half of getting yourself some beautiful fossil Pokemon. Now, the other thing that you're going to want to do is make yourself a fossil machine. Because without the fossil machine, you will never get fossil type Pokemon. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated. We'll start with the base of it. It's just six aluminum plates. Simple enough. The uh, middle part of the fossil machine display is four redstone and obsidian. So you do have to get some obsidian in order for this project to work. If you want fossil type, you got to get yourself some obsidian. Oh, goodness. My mouth's drying out. Sorry, my apologies. Next thing you're going to want to get is not tea. Recipe. You're going to want to get the fossil machine top. Now this is simple, this is six more aluminum plates with one piece of redstone, that will get you the fossil machine top, and then finally the last piece is the fossil machine tank, which is just six glass pane, three buckets of water, and yes, you get the buckets back after you create yourself the fossil machine tank. You stick that all on the crafting table, I'm going to chuck that out on the ground, and you end up with these glorious looking things. Now, this thing is not a necessity, but I've found that it is pretty cool. Simply you make it with three oak planks some purple wool, and some glass pane will get you the fossil display. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, as you have been doing a lot for this mod showcase, what do we do with these wonderful looking things? Well, here, let me show you. You take your fossils, right, your covered fossils, and you walk over to your fossil cleaner, you right click, okay? It's going to do this sweet animation where this, this little fossil is going to spin and spin and spin, and this machine is basically going to clean your fossil for you so that you can in then put it inside of the fossil machine and create yourself some fossil type Pokemon. Now, this process takes like 20, 30 seconds for it to fully clean your fossil. And now we have a fully cleaned Kabuto fossil. Now, because I have done this and played in my Pixelmon series, I know which ones are which. And I will show you guys the looks of each one. Now, this one that is still covered, if you look, it's got a little bit of a shell pattern. This is going to be your Ammonite. Your dome fossil is, when it's covered, is going to have two little eyes, and you know that that is a Kabuto. Your Aerodactyl, which is old amber, will look different than the other two Pokemon, okay? So just a little, just a little juicy tidbit for you right there. That's how you know your fossils and you tell them apart. Now, now that we have our cleaned fossils, we can open up this display case by just right-clicking. And if you shift right, shift right. Good thing we still have stuff over here. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't realize that breaks me. All right. If you just right-click, it'll put your fossil in. You right-click, and there you go. Now you got yourself a fossil stuck in your, your fossil display case. If you want it back, you just shift right. 
if you're in survival, you shift right click and it comes back. Now that we have our cleaned helix fossil, we have the ammonite fossil. So, now that you have your three fossils cleaned off, and if you have generation 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in, you will have more fossils than this. But these are the gen 1 fossils, and I recommend starting with gen 1, people. This mod's crazy, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to want to right click into the fossil machine, and it's going to do a really sweet animation where it's picking your fossil apart and basically creating it into, in this instance, an aerodactyl. But, it's going to take a couple minutes for this to fully work, and what you're going to do is you're going to put a Pokeball in. You just right click with the Pokeball so that when your fossil completes... Hello, Charizard. Hey, bruh. When your fossil completes, it will have a Pokeball for your Pokemon to get into. So now, while that completes, I'm going to go over one of the last things in terms of the basics of this mod showcase, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the PC. Now, the PC is something that is definitely a necessity. It is where your Pokemon go because you only have six slots right here that you can have. You can have six Pokemon in your team, and any other Pokemon that you catch past those six go straight to your PC, in which you can go into your PC and you can swap out Pokemon, and you can basically create your dream team. PC is not that hard to make. It is six more aluminum plates, some glass pane, redstone, and a redstone lamp. If you don't know how to make a redstone lamp, it is glowstone with four redstone. Now, so that means you're either going to have to go to the nether or kill yourself some electric type Pokemon. Because each Pokemon drops a distinct item. And just a little tidbit for you, the electric ones drop glowstone dust. So how are we thinking on this fossil? 33%. So, that is about the basics of this. This is how you want to start off your Pokemon, okay? These are, if you will, the things you need to succeed. Oh my gosh, we are rhyming like a champ. Now, while this thing is continuing to go, I'm going to go show you guys the battle animation. Because this is, again, something huge and important. And I believe Charmander is going to die if I chuck him at this fear or the Pajiot, Pajoto. But I'm just going to show you what's going to happen. So... If you're running through the world and you see a Pokemon that you either want to catch or you want to be in your squad or you just want to fight, there are two things you can do. With your Pajoto right there, you can chuck a Pokeball at it. And that will obviously try to catch it. You're going to wait for four rolls. If you can get four, that means you've caught that Pokemon. But as you can see, the Pajoto broke free. Luckily, we have more Pokeballs because we're in creative. We're going to see if we can try to catch this one while that uh, cooks up our fossil, but it's going to keep breaking free. So one other thing that you can do is you can chuck out, not Charmander, not yet, not Charmander. One thing, if you don't want to catch it, if you want to just attempt to slay it mercilessly, you're going to want to hit R and make sure that the two Pokemon cross paths, okay? Obviously, Charmander is not going to win this one because Pajoto is level 24. But when you chuck your Pokemon out using R, a GUI will pop up just like it did. You have the option to bag, which will open your bag and you'll be able to throw Pokeballs or use revives. The other thing you can do is you can fight, you can flee, you can run. You can do all those things straight off of that GUI. And that is basically how you control your Pokemon. Now, as you can see in the top left corner, it says my level Charmander. My Charmander level 5 is fainted. And when I try to throw it out, it says that Charmander is unusable. Unable to battle. Unable to battle. My bad. So you're thinking to yourself, well, how do I use my Charmander again? And that, that is a very great question. You guys are asking all the right questions today. What you guys are going to want to do is get yourself a bed. And if, if, if you can't get... If you obviously can't kill sheep in this game, so you're going to probably need to farm some animals for some string. Get yourself a bed. And now that your Charmander is fainted... Look at our Aerodactyl. It's 88% done. As you can see, you will start to see what the fossil is going to turn into in the tank. It will slowly get bigger and bigger until it is at 100%. But, as you can see, Charmander is fainted. We cannot use him. Get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your head, get your thoughts in a line. Once you wake up, your Charmander, or whatever Pokemon you have, will be fully restored. Its moves fully restored. Everything about your Pokemon will be restored. And ladies and gentlemen, to finish off this episode, let's grab ourselves the Aerodactyl. Now that you can see it is fully formed, you want to right click the Pokeball, and you will see on the left side of my screen that Aerodactyl has been added to the squad now. I will show off the arrow thing. As you can see, that little blue disc moves, and that is letting you know which Pokemon you are focusing on and which one will be able to be thrown out. And let's check out your boy. Now, the greatest thing about Aerodactyl is A, the fossil is not hard to find. The hardest thing about it is getting this stuff, the stuff to process the fossil. 
But once you, have, once you have yourself a beautiful Aerodactyl, you can actually get on him and fly around. This makes getting Pokemon so much easier. Just makes your entire life easier. Now back to what we were saying again about IVs and stats. We can easily check our Aerodactyl stats by going to Summary. You can see it protects the Pokemon from recoil damage. The fact that it has a rock head. This is a bashful one. It doesn't have any increase to it. Its moves are Fire Fang, Wing Attack, Bite, and Scary Face. As you can see on the side over here, it'll show you the power and the accuracy of those moves. And then you got yourself a fossil. Now you can obviously take your other fossils, like your Helix fossil, chuck it in here. Just make sure you chuck a Pokeball onto the stand with it to catch yourself your Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to do it for this uh, this in s this small, this glimpse, this the basics of Pixelmon, if, if you will. Let me know in the comments if you want to see... A full in-depth showcase of the moves, the abilities, everything that this mod has to offer, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to see that, put that down below in the comment section, guys. But yes, I'm going to leave this video off here, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this mod showcase, guys. If you want to see more, more mod showcases, my goodness, I can't even speak today. If you want to see more mod showcases, let me know by smashing that like button down below, guys. And as always, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And let me know down below that you subscribed, guys. I love every single one of you, and I'll see you all in the next video.